Hello again, everyone. Another video for you this week. This time, I want to talk about some of the grammar questions uh, that people submitted. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll start by saying, uh, you know, what I've said before and what I've said all semester going back to, you know, the very first class, um, which is that grammar, I think, is generally overrated uh, in terms of how important it is that when we're talking about, you know, our priorities uh, and the things that make an essay a good essay, things that make our writing good, I think grammar is pretty low on that list. Um, like I said, I think things like thesis and organization and intro, conclusion, uh, quotes, research, I think all of that stuff is more important than grammar. I think that really, like, the importance of grammar, I think it, it like, it's mostly just about showing professors for your higher level courses uh, that like you're putting in the effort and you're trying hard and you're paying attention and stuff. And you know, some teachers are just psychopaths uh, and want to ruin your life over grammar. Uh, I'm not one of those people. So I think by waiting until so late in the course, I have adequately communicated to you, uh, you know, how, how uh, not important really I think grammar is. Um, and obviously, I, you know, going back to like the first Sean Young essay at the beginning of the class, I kind of agree with that stuff. Um, but I know that you guys want to know about this stuff because you're going to have uh, other professors who, you know, take points off and all these things. Um, so I do want to answer some of these questions. Um, obviously, I posted uh, the one file that's called Grammar Explanations, um, and I'm going to try to keep this video short because I honestly think that document probably does a better job of explaining this stuff than, than I can in, in a video like this. Uh, mostly because I think a big part of grammar and understanding it is looking at examples, right? And I'm not going to go through and try to post examples as I'm talking. That, that would take me forever, sorry. Um, but uh, if, you, if you go and look at that file, uh, Grammar Explanations, you can see all the examples. I'm just going to kind of talk through some of them on this video, so I definitely would look at that. And I also have that other file about um, comma splices. So I'll talk about that stuff in this video, but I think ultimately like the visual examples might be the most helpful thing. So I, I would read those. Um, but I did have a few people asking questions about commas. Um, so I'm gonna get to that, but I had a couple of other questions that, that I wanted to answer first before I talk about commas. Uh, somebody asked me, what do you look for with grammar mistakes when grading? It's a good question. What do I look for when I'm grading in terms of grammar mistakes? I don't really seek out grammar mistakes. I, I'm so much more focused with your arguments and, and your organization and, and how convincing what you're saying is and how you're backing up your points and, and you know, uh, using the research and the quotes and explaining the quotes and all of those things that we've talked about. I'm like kind of so focused on that stuff that I don't really look for grammar mistakes. So it's only when something really sticks out um, that I even really notice it. And, and usually I won't really mark it, uh, when I'm grading your essays, um, unless it's not like, uh, I see you making like the same mistake a bunch of times. Maybe I'll highlight it and, and just, uh, tell you like what's wrong with it. Um, honestly, typos <laughs> are the biggest, uh, my, the, the grammar mistake that sticks out the most to me. The one I notice the most is just when students make typos, you know? And like, I don't, I don't, you know, if you look at my rubrics that I use, I, I don't have a certain amount of points that I take off for these things. Um, but, but I will say that if you hand in a paper with a bunch of typos, it, it does make the professor feel like, like you were rushing or like you didn't proofread it or, or that you didn't, put in maximum effort, you know? So so I, I do think typos are probably the one that stick out the most to me. Uh, okay, other questions uh, before I talk about commas. Uh, someone asked about the difference between affect and effect. Effect with an A and effect with an E. Um, this is a good question, it's very confusing. Here's the way I can explain it. Effect is a noun while affect is a verb, right? So if we said um, the effect of uh, the earthquake was that the house fell down, that's a noun, right? The effect was this, that's using it as a noun. If you said, you know, my, uh, oh, the, 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 I thought of a morbid example, I guess I'll say it, you know, my, my family member's death um, affected me greatly, affected, it did something, it's a verb there, right? So that is the difference, effect, verb, affect, uh, oh, sorry, effect, noun, affect, verb, yes. Um, I had another question here about uh, leading into quotes, which, which is something that I had um, on my, my explanation uh, document, but I'll talk about it here too. Um, 
So someone was asking about using commas when you introduce a quote, right? Uh, you know, if you say something like, uh, the author wrote, and then you're going into a quote, you want to give us a comma after the word wrote, right? Um, however, the example the person provided here, they gave me an example that says, um, Napoleon thought that, quote, while a single country may, remained free, he was never safe. And they were asking where the comma goes here. And what I would say is that if it was Napoleon thought while a single country remained free, then after thought, you would give us the comma. But the way uh, that this person wrote it here, Napoleon thought that, quote, while a single country remained free, he was never safe. You actually don't need a comma at all there um, because you kind of like the difference is introducing the quote by saying Napoleon thought and then giving it to us and then you need a comma or saying Napoleon thought that that like when you do it that way you're weaving it into your sentence kind of you know so you don't always need a comma before the quote it's only if you introduce it in that in that way where we say the author states or this person said um so if you're not saying it up that way if you're kind of weaving the quote into your own sentence uh then you don't actually need a comma there um, and with that, let me talk about some of this comma stuff. Um, so yeah, commas are definitely the number one thing I would focus on um, because I think like students, the, number, the basically the two biggest things I'll hear from students um, with grammar is, is commas themselves and also run on sentences. And I think these two are very connected because I think the most common type of run on sentence involves commas. Um, I think uh, the most common type of run on sentence is a comma splice. Um, which, if you take a look at that document that I, I posted from uh, my grammar handbook, which I should mention, by the way. Oh, I don't, I don't have it handy here. Um, but um, all of this stuff for me, I, I don't really remember this stuff. Like, I don't really give a shit about this stuff, you know? Like, for me, I've just been doing it so long that I don't have to think about it that much. But I do have a grammar book um, that I consult. It's called uh, uh, the, the McGraw-Hill Handbook of English Grammar and Usage. Um, and that's a pretty good one. It's, it has a lot of examples. It's pretty easy to read. And the, the couple of pages I posted about comma splices come from that book. So I would say if you're really worried about grammar or, or like if you have professors who are, you know, being shitty about this, um, I would uh, buy one of these handbooks maybe um, and just try to defer to that. Uh, and that's where a lot of the stuff that I'm saying, I mostly got these explanations and things of, of the documents I wrote myself, but I did get a lot of the information from these handbooks. I tried to make it, uh, you know, even easier to understand for you. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go through some of these common ones. Um, opening phrase, this is like if you start a sentence with however or on the other hand. Sometimes like although, can, although can go either way because you could have like, um, although I would never do that. And you might have a comma after the word although, but you could also say like, um, although I wanted to go to the store, comma, I was too tired. Um, so that one, it's sometimes like you have to think about how you're working your sentence. Like, uh, do you have an introductory phrase or is it with the comma in the middle, which are two different of the options, the rules, I guess, that I gave you here. So opening phrase, like, however, comma, opening phrase, a non-essential clause. This is where um, basically you have something in the middle that doesn't need to be there. Um, the sentence would be understandable without this, but you want to give it to us just to give us some more information. For instance, I give you the example, my mom, comma, who loves movies, comma, is coming over today. Now this works as non-essential because you could just say my mom's coming over today. Um, but you know, for some reason, I guess in this example, I thought it was important to know she loves movies. Um, so you go ahead and get it in there, commas on both sides. The next one I have um, is a list, obviously a list of more than two things. I think we're pretty comfortable with that one. Um, after that, I had what I was just talking about um, leading into a quote, right? The author writes, comma, quote, I am a dumb idiot. Uh, great example for me. Excellent stuff there. Uh, so you, that's how you use the comma like that. And like I said, um, you only need it if you're introducing it in that, in that way. If you're giving us a verb like writes or says or yells or something like that. Uh, if you're calling someone by name, that only really happens in dialogue. We won't worry too much about that. Um, in the middle of the sentence. Okay, so so there's a few words that, that like will let you know sometimes that you might need in the middle of a sentence. Like if, if you have a sentence that starts with if, you're going to need a comma in the middle. If you're going to the store, pick up some milk. Um, and, and I think this is the one where like, you know, people say, oh, you, you have a comma where like the pause in the sentence is. And that, that is not a foolproof way to do this. Um, you know, you can get tripped up trying to do that. But I think for this one, like if you're going to the store, pick me up some milk. You can, you can feel the pause there. So like that doesn't always work. But I think in terms of like, uh, this this rule of, of having a comma in the middle of the sentence for some of this stuff, you can kind of feel the pause. Um, I would go to the store, 
comma, but I am too tired. Um, so yeah, there's other rules for commas, definitely. You can find some of the other rules. But really, if you can, like, do correctly, like, the, the introductory word in the middle of the sentence, the non-essential introduce, like, if you can get these kind of major ones down, um, these are where most of the comma problems are, I think. Um, so, so, yeah, you can check that out. Look at that. Oh, and I want to say about commas places. I think what happens with the commas places is that, like, a comma can only be used to join, like, what could be its own sentence with a dependent clause. It has to be an independent clause and then a comma and a dependent clause. So basically, what, what, I know it's confusing. What that means is that you can't use a comma to connect two things that could be full sentences on their own. Does that make sense? Um, the only, like, if we're using a comma, it, it has to be to separate, like, on one side of that has to be something that couldn't be its own sentence. Um, like, if you are going to the store, comma, pick up some milk. Uh, pick up some milk, that could be its own sentence, right? You'd be telling someone to pick up some milk. Um, if you are going to the store, that couldn't be its own sentence, right? Uh, so that's something that you have to check, uh, like, when you're, if, you, if you're, you know, if you get feedback that you have run sentences or stuff, that's what I would look. Are you using just a comma to separate two things that could be their own sentences? Um, because what, what you can do instead of using a comma like that um, is using the word and or but or something like that, or you could just turn it into two separate sentences. I think this is something that we do. I, honestly, I do it when I text all the time. And I think we kind of pick this up from text messaging. Because um, I feel like we have an aversion to using um, a period when we're texting because, you know, everyone knows that, like, if you send a period to the sentence, it seems like you're mad or something, right? Uh, so I think we tend to just use commas to separate what are actually complete sentences. Um, and that would be a comma splice. And people, you know, you might have people say that that's a run-on sentence. Um, so that's another big thing with commas. Um, okay, a couple other things here. Uh, the titles of stuff. Um, you have two different options for titles. It either gets italicized or it gets quotation marks. Uh, longer things, full-length things, get italicized. The books, newspapers, academic journals, novels, plays, movies, all italicized. Because those are kind of like the full unit, you know? There's like no, like, like there's subdivisions within them, but that's the full unit. Like you, you have a newspaper and then you have articles within the newspaper, right? Um, you have a book of poetry, and then you have poems within that book. So the larger thing gets the italics, while the smaller uh, unit gets the quotation marks. So, like the newspaper article gets quotation marks. I think that makes sense. Uh, last thing that I'll talk about here, colons. Um, so colons like are, are not totally necessary. You honestly could probably get through college without really needing to use them. Um, and there's really two main instances that I listed for you here where we have to use them. One is introducing a list. The example I gave you, there are three things I need from the store, colon, apples, beer, and bleach. Um, so it's because you're setting it up that way. There are three things I need. And then after the colon, you're telling us that. Uh, and the other one is, is it's like setting it up in a similar way. I called it adding emphasis because you're still kind of introducing what's going to come after the colon, but this time it's not a list, you know? So I gave you, um, there was only one thing standing in Batman's way, colon, the Joker. Um, you could also do this to be like, uh, you know, um, you, you'll never guess who I saw at the store before, colon, John. So, like, if, if, if you're, uh, anytime that you're, like, introducing, you're setting up what comes next like that, uh, that's when you use a colon. Um, and I guess I'll end by saying that, um, no one asked about this, um, but people always ask me about semicolons. Um, and my advice would just be to kind of avoid using them. You don't need them. Um, if you could get through college without really using a colon, you could definitely get through it without using a semicolon. Um, the, the people use semicolons, basically, the reason to use semicolons is like I was talking about before, with times when you have two, like, complete sentences, and, you know, you have to turn them into two sentences with a period, or use a word like and or whatever. Another way around that is you can connect them with a semicolon. So you can have two things that could be their own sentences, but for some reason, you want to link them because they're on the same topic or something. So people use a semicolon to do that. Um, I know that's confusing. And again, you could totally just not do that <laughs> and it would be fine. Um, so, yeah, I think the documents, honestly, are more helpful about the grammar stuff. But, you know, there's some some verbal explanation if that does anything for you. OK, see you next time.